Greetings and welcome back to your free Windows 7 training course for the 7680 exam. This video looks at certificates in Windows 7. At the basic level, a certificate contains a public key and a number of data fields. Besides the fields identifying the encryption used and the other parameters, the most important field is who the certificate came from. This data allows the user to confirm they are talking to the correct party. Consider this. A user connects up to the website example.com and opens a secure HTTPS connection. The web server sends its certificate to the user. The certificate contains the public key for the server and also details about the domain name it came from, in this case, example.com. The first thing you may want to think about in regard to the security used in a certificate is could a hacker intercept the certificate and change the data in the certificate to point to their own web page. In this case, could they change the L in example to a 1, a common trick used by hackers to register a domain name that is similar to the one you were trying to access. To prevent this from happening, the data inside the certificate is digitally signed. A digital signature, put simply, is when the data is put through a number of different software processes using the private key as one of the variables. This creates a digital signature which is added to the certificate. Once the computer receives the certificate, it can check the details in the certificate are correct by checking it against the digital signature. Think of the digital signature like a checksum. If the certificate changes, the digital signature won't be correct. Since the private key was used as part of the process to create the digital signature, a hacker cannot simply change the certificate and regenerate the digital signature. Sounds complex, doesn't it? Just remember this. The certificate contains the DNS name of the site. The digital signature allows the other site to confirm this information is correct and has not been changed. Once it verifies this information is correct, it can be assumed the certificate came from that site. If the hacker were to issue the same certificate to the user, the computer would be able to work out that the hacker's website is not the website the certificate was issued for. Why? Because the hacker's website would be registered as a different name. Thus, this certificate could not be used to make a connection. Now that the user has a certificate that it can verify that it is valid and from the correct party, the user can use the public key in that certificate to open an HTTPS connection and safely send personal details over the Internet. Now you may be wondering how bidirectional communication works. That is, how do you open a secure connection between two parties when you have only one certificate and thus only one public and private key? The process works like this. The client computer generates an encryption key. This key is sent to the server using its public key. The key can be decrypted using the server's private key. Since the key is encrypted, if the message is intercepted by a hacker, it cannot be decoded without the private key. Now the server can send an encrypted key back to the client to use for communication first encrypting it with the key that the client sent. Both sides now have a key that they can use to encrypt data. This process allows the client to authenticate the server and ensure that it is authorized to use that certificate. But how does the server know the client is who it says it is? Using usernames and passwords is a simple way to authenticate the user and is acceptable in most HTTPS situations. If you want additional security, you can install a certificate on the local computer. This allows the server to authenticate the client and ensures that it is talking to who it thinks it is. The next question that arises with certificates is who or what creates these certificates? The first type of certificate that you can create is a self-signed certificate. This is a certificate that is generated by your local computer. Self-signed certificates are considered quite weak and generally only used in special cases such as test environments. To best use certificates, they should be issued from a CA or Certificate Authority. Microsoft has its own CA solution which you can learn more about and install in our Windows Server 2008 R2 courses. For the 7680 exam, simply know this. A CA 
can either be a private CA that is installed and managed by the company or a third-party CA. There are many trusted third-party CAs on the internet and your browser is configured automatically with the public certificates from these CAs. Regardless of whether the CA is a private or a third-party public CA, the certificate model works on trust. To illustrate this, consider this. A third-party CA or private CA is at the top. It can issue certificates. The CA may issue a certificate direct to a client or server or to a subordinate CA. A subordinate CA can even issue certificates to servers or clients on the network or even another subordinate CA. The popular third-party CAs will have their certificates already installed locally on the computer. If you use a private CA, you should add the private CA certificates to your computers so they know to trust the CA. If you are using a domain and a Microsoft CA, a feature called auto-enrollment may have been set up on your network to install the certificates automatically on your client. When the client uses a certificate for a server, it can check the certificate to verify the certificate came from that server that is trusted by the root CA. The whole system works off trust. The client trusts the root CA, so any certificate issued directly for the root CA or from a subordinate is also trusted. Another way I like to remember it is with the saying, any friend of yours is a friend of mine. Certificates work the same way. The certificate trusts the root CA, so any certificate issued from a subordinate of that CA is also trusted. That should be enough theory on how certificates work. Let's now go to my Windows 7 computer to see how to manage certificates in Windows 7. First of all, I need to start Certificate Manager. It does not, by default, appear in the Start menu, so you need to type in the complete file name in the Start menu. That is, certmgr.msc. The Certificate Manager shows all the certificates installed on this computer in separate folders. The first folder is Personal. Personal shows any certificates that exist on this computer for that user. The trainer certificate shown here is for the trainer to use with the encrypted file system. This certificate was created automatically by Windows when the first file on this Windows system was encrypted. Any certificates that are added to this user will appear under Personal. The encrypted file system gives you the option to back up the certificates used for encryption. If you wish, you may want to manually export a certificate. To do this, select the certificate, right-click it, select All Tasks, and select the option Export. This will start the export wizard. Once you are past the welcome screen, you will get asked if you want to export the private key. The private key is used to decrypt data encrypted with the public key. In this case, I will select Do Not Export the Private Key. On the next screen, you can decide which format you want to export the certificate in. The choice only really matters if you are importing the certificate on another system that only supports that type. Windows will read any format that it exports. After I enter in the file name on the next screen, in this case I will save it to the desktop. The wizard is finished and the certificate has been exported. If you wish to import a certificate, right-click Certificates and select the Import option. The Import Wizard is just a matter of selecting the file name of the certificate and the wizard will then ask you where you want to store the certificate. By default, the certificate will be stored in the Personal folder. However, if you are importing a certificate that is not a personal certificate, you can choose the other option or let Windows decide where to store the certificate. Once I finish the wizard, the certificate will be imported. When your Windows system was installed, a number of certificates were pre-installed. If I select Trusted Root Certification Authorities, you can see these certificates. Here you can see a number of third-party vendors and even a certificate from Microsoft. Since this computer is in a domain with a Microsoft Certificate Authority running, you can also see the certificate for this CA at the bottom. 
in the folder Intermediate Certificate Authorities, in the folder Certificate Revocation will be listed any certificate that has been revoked since they were issued. In this folder there is one certificate. If I open this certificate and select the tab Revocation List, you can see a list of the certificates that have been revoked. A revocation list is a list of all the certificates that have been issued and then later been revoked for some reason. Unfortunately, once a certificate is issued, you can't simply take it back or cancel it. In the Certificates folder, you will see all the subordinate certificates that have been installed. Under the third-party root certification authorities, you will see a list of certificates that are not from your organization or Microsoft, but trusted by Windows. If one of these root authorities issues a certificate to another company to use on their web page, Windows will be able to check the certificate of this server against one of these certificates and verify that the certificate is genuine. Under the folder Trusted People, you will see a list of other certificates installed on this computer. If another user were using EFS on this computer, you would see their certificate appearing in here. This concludes certificates. In the next video, I will look at smart cards. Smart cards contain certificates that Microsoft can use for authentication. Thanks for watching this free video on Windows 7 certificates. For the rest of the videos in this completely free training course, please see our webpage or YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.